It's show day. Attention passengers, we are experiencing delays due to signal malfunctions. Attention passengers, we are currently delayed due to train traffic ahead of us. We are currently delayed. We are currently delayed. 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 The bus came the minute you left. Stop! Your wife won't remember you. That's not true. This is happening because you masturbated in high school. No. That's right. Run, you little bitch. I'm almost there. Almost there. Just play the intro. It's not just destroying my life. Everyone hates public transportation. Our transit has never been worse. Enough's enough. How much more can we take? You think this is acceptable to treat human beings this way? This woman's look of exasperation spoke volumes. Since BART opened up at 6, it's not been working, and it's about to be 9. New Jersey Transit is the absolute worst! I'm not going to get to my game now because they are incompetent! 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 <laughs> That guy got so mad, he went through puberty again. <laughs> People tweet meaner things about their public transit than Medicare, the IRS, and United Airlines. Do you know how bad you have to be to get more shit than United? You guys remember that time they used an Asian doctor to wipe down the aisle? And we were all like, have you been on the L train, though? At least this dude is moving. And that's not wrong. American public transportation is a disaster. If you commute to work by train, you may notice this, cracks in America's crumbling infrastructure. Insufficient funding have left America's passenger rail network lagging. More than a half dozen MTA buses have caught fire. This bus driver would only talk if we concealed their identity. Yes, buses do catch on fire. Buses have caught on fire with passengers inside of them. Public transit is sending people into witness protection. <laughs> Look, I get the whole anonymous thing, but why do they make him sound like a demon? <laughs> like, you want to empathize, but I also feel like he's about to sacrifice a virgin. <laughs> now, this isn't some abstract problem. Good public transit can be life-changing. This is true. A Harvard study linked shorter commutes with getting out of poverty. Commute time mattered more than anything, more than schools or crime in your neighborhood. So if you're a kid and you're watching this, skip school, steal shit, smoke weed, but whatever you do, live near the express bus. <laughs> it makes sense that public transportation is so important. Think about it. Like, really, it's our lifeline to jobs, education, healthcare, food. And despite that, the American Society of Civil Engineers recently gave our transportation a D minus. The lowest grade of any U.S. infrastructure. Here's my thing, D might just give it the F. <laughs> like, whose dignity are you saving at this point? A D minus means that you failed, but the teacher is afraid of your parents. <laughs> Last year, because of terrible service and lack of funding, ridership fell in nearly every major city where people depend on transit, which can lead to a transit debt spiral. When fewer people use public transit, it makes less money, which means it either has to cut service or raise fares or both, so even fewer people use it, which means it makes even less money, which means even worse service and higher fares. It's a vicious cycle. 
It's like what happened to MoviePass. <laughs> remember MoviePass? You remember, like they were like 10 bucks a month, any movie you want. <laughs> then fewer people used it and they were like, all right, hold up, all right. $15 a month. <laughs> then even fewer people used it and they were like, all right, it's two grand a week and you can only see movies where Timothy Chalamet smokes cigarettes. <laughs> We already see this debt spiral happening. People all over the country are choosing cars over transit. A new study finds Americans are spending more time behind the wheel than ever before. U.S. motorists spend 70 billion hours behind the wheel a year. That's up 8% from 2014. 3.2 trillion miles traveled uh, on Americans, uh, America's roadways, which was an increase of 12 billion miles uh, over the previous years. 3.2 trillion miles. Now, obviously, most of that was Beto taking road trips to find himself. <laughs> He's like, I don't need a campaign manager, man. I got my arms <laughs> in the open road. <laughs> now, all this driving might seem natural, but unlike the de Blasio campaign, this wasn't an accident. <laughs> there are a lot of reasons why American public transportation is terrible. Zoning laws, mismanagement, but in particular, your train sucks because there are hidden forces around the country that want you in your car. And that's what I wanna focus on tonight. American public transportation is under attack. From the top down at the federal level and from the bottom up at the local level, America is killing public transit the same way a second grade class kills their take home hamster. <laughs> Nobody's blameless, but some people did more damage than others. <laughs> Just so you know, Brett Russo definitely killed our second grade hamster. <laughs> Now, Trump has proposed increasing spending on highways by more than $1.5 billion while also trying to slash transit funding, like the Capital Investment Grant Program, which is the main way public transit gets funded at the federal level, and he's proposed to kill it twice, which makes sense. Trump doesn't even know what buses are. I mean, the last time he was on one, he thought it was a locker room. Now, the federal government supports public transit through the Department of Transportation. Yeah, just catch up. The DLT's job is pretty straightforward, all right? Congress approves funding, and then the DOT, they hand out the money, right? But under Trump, the DOT is holding up billions and now takes twice as long for projects to get funding, and it's much more expensive. It's longer, harder, and more expensive than it needs to be. It's basically a destination wedding. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have friends, that are doing destination weddings, but if I have to get vaccine and a machete to get to your wedding, <laughs> I'm not coming. They're like, awesome, do you love me? You're not worth Zika, okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Now, if you want an example of the government messing with transit, look at the Gateway program, which is right down the street. Gateway would repair the main tunnel that connects Jersey to New York. Every day, more than 800,000 people use this tunnel to get to work. And to borrow a phrase from our president, it's kind of a shithole. The estimated $20 billion project includes new rail tunnels under the Hudson River. The failure of the existing 110-year-old tunnels is imminent. The existing tunnel is a single point of failure for 10% of America's gross domestic product. A collapse of the tunnel could injure thousands and cost our economy an estimated $100 million a day. $100 million a day? and thousands of injuries. New York hasn't seen that kind of destruction since Spider-Man the Musical. <laughs> Look, if this tunnel collapsed, it would shut down Northeast Transit from Boston to DC, a region that experts say accounts for not just 10, but 20% of America's GDP. But Trump refuses to pay for Gateway. This is pathetic. If you've traveled, you know this. Other countries don't do this. Just one of Paris' rail systems moves more people per year than all of America's commuter railways combined. Japan has a train that levitates. It literally floats. <laughs> and Denmark, they love buses so much, they made this ad. Okay, we all want to fuck that bus, right? Don't make me feel weird about this. That's what they were going for. 
Now look, there are lots of cities and states in the United States that want to get busy with transit, but they are facing massive opposition, especially at the local level. And no one is leading that opposition more than Charles and David Koch, AKA the Koch brothers. Now I know these wrinkled ATMs are the bad guy of every story. Voter suppression, gerrymandering, climate denial. I'm sick of them. I don't even want to show their picture because A, they're terrible people, and B, showing their photos actually makes them money. Coke Industries has a major stake in Getty Images. Just showing that picture of them cost us $250. <laughs> but this is a story about them, so I have to show them. And it's not just that picture. Every picture we use of the Koch brothers, they make money. <laughs> All of this, this just cost us $1,000. And it's not just the Cokes. I can't show you anything without them getting paid. I can't show you Yo-Yo Ma <laughs> or this baby eating a lemon for the first time. They own this baby. <laughs> this adorable baby eating a fucking, they own it. <laughs> I can't show you things that are weird like this old man having fun at the dentist. They own <laughs> his weird smile. Showing all of that was $1,500. <laughs> but if we're gonna talk about public transportation, we're gonna have to talk about the Cokes. Now luckily, there are actually two Koch brothers out there who were way more fun to watch. Camera's on me, bitch. Hold it's on. It's on me, too. We're the Cook Brothers. This is Derek. I'm Daniel. Tonight on Playing With Fire. We started off in modeling. I shaved my nipple hair last night. We own multiple restaurants. Good job, Tonight, man. man. Seriously. Now, I, I, even though we've got three restaurants to run in New York City, our signature day and night party does pop-ups everywhere. The easiest way to seduce a woman is to take her to dinner, you know? That's cliche, and, bro. No, it's not. Shut the fuck up. What is that hat, Daniel? This is money in the bank. My ears are warm, my balls are tingly. All right, these Florida State Winklevoss twins are Derek and Daniel Koch. They're the other Koch brothers, and they're former reality stars. Now, these Koch brothers are amazing. These Koch brothers suck. So for the rest of this episode, even though I'm talking about Charles and David, I'm going to show you Daniel and Derek. <laughs> So the Koch brothers are conservative billionaires who have a huge stake in pretty much anything that has to do with cars. Oil, gas, asphalt, tires, seat belts. They own seat belts. <laughs> and they have spent millions funding a right-wing political group called Americans for Prosperity, or AFP. And although they deny it, the Cokes have been quietly working to kill public transit around the country through AFP. What we're living out here is a national agenda by the Koch brothers and others. They believe in fossil fuels. They, they mine an awful lot of it. So all across the country, they are trying to stop public transit because, frankly, it's a far more sustainable alternative. The Americans for Prosperity has just re most recently meddled in a mass transit issue in Nashville. No, I told you, I don't want to see them anymore. Play the fun Koch brothers. The Americans for Prosperity has just re most recently meddled in a mass transit issue in Nashville. How much better that is? That news is upsetting, but now it's also hilarious. Nashville shows how much influence the Cokes really have. The city has a huge traffic problem. So in 2017, the mayor proposed building new rail and bus lines. It went up for a vote, and early polling showed that nearly 60% of Nashvillians supported it. But then the Cokes got in the game. And remember, <laughs> killing transit is good for the Cokes and it's great for their bottom line. The same way that launching Billie Eilish into space would be great for Lord. <laughs> it's getting rid of the alternative. Also, it's sending her back to where she came from. <laughs> she wants to go home, you guys. <laughs> Let her go home. In Nashville, AFP activists organized a door-to-door -door canvassing campaign against the new rail and bus lines. They told voters it was too expensive and would raise taxes, and it worked. Flipping public opinion from almost 60% for the transit plan to more than 60% against it. And guess what the Koch brothers did? Throw a party. That was 10 a.m. <laughs> this is their playbook. AFP targets local voters, and then they flip them with misleading campaigns. And it all looks like grassroots opposition, but it's actually mayonnaise billionaire bullshit. They have done this in at least 10 other states around the country. Just look at Milwaukee, okay? Wisconsin has been the Cokes' private lab in libertarian fuckery for years. 
They have a history of opposing public transit, and for most of the last decade, they've also had a loyal soldier in the governor's office, Scott Walker, who looks like if Paul Rudd got less time in the womb. <laughs> I mean, it's so accurate. The Cokes spent millions getting Walker elected, and Walker was more than happy to attack their favorite targets, public unions, Medicaid, food stamps, and he also did this. A move by Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker that was likely intended to ingratiate himself in the eyes of a Jewish constituent has decidedly backfired. In a letter about a Hanukkah menorah, instead of signing off with a mazel tov, Governor Walker wrote, thank you again and Molotov. <laughs> He signed his letter, thank you again, and bomb threat. Also, have a happy Hanukkah Matata. <laughs> now, Walker spent nearly 20 years trying to kill public transit. He put the Milwaukee bus system in a debt spiral and killed high-speed rail projects. But when it came to spending on highways, he didn't bat an eye. As governor, he spent almost $2 billion on a single highway junction called the Zoo Interchange which sounds like a program that sends pandas to Amsterdam for a semester <laughs> and Dutch kids to the Bronx Zoo. But the zoo interchange was the most expensive highway project in Wisconsin's history and ended up costing the same as 15 years of public transit funding. Now, why did he do this? We didn't need these gigantic high-speed rail lines like they're seeing becoming a boondoggle in California. Okay, even though boondoggle sounds like an STD from 1840, <laughs> It's a common term people use to describe a waste of money, especially when it comes to public transit. A new measure to finish Honolulu's troubled rail transit project. Critics are calling it nothing more than a boondoggle. The train is a boondoggle. Rail boondoggles. Gateway earmark boondoggle. The boondoggle of boondoggles. Boondoggle. 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 Okay, what is going on with this guy? He looks like he's either about to expose a major government conspiracy, or himself, <laughs> or maybe both. He's just like, the CIA killed Avril Lavigne in 2003. <laughs> Boondoggle. Now, here's the thing. The argument <laughs> that roads are a better investment than public transit is nonsense. Every billion dollars spent on public transit generates over 21,000 jobs. That's more than highways, water, energy, or defense, in fact, for every dollar we invest in public transit, we get $4 back in economic output. And there are other costs to ignoring public transit. One of the underlying issues is always gonna be the issue of race. If you're black or Latino, you're six times more likely to not have a car and to be dependent on public transit. No one cares, you know? Every day we wait on buses hours and hours, and nothing happens. Okay, that's not true. If you're black and you wait two hours for the bus, nothing happens. But if you're white and wait two hours for the bus, you win an Oscar. <laughs> when we don't fund public transit, we are basically saying we care about some people more than others. And that's exactly what Walker was doing in Wisconsin. Milwaukee is the most segregated metro area in the country, with one study calling it the second worst place to be black in the United States. Now, obviously, the first place is Joe Biden's house. <laughs> Look, he doesn't do anything bad. He just keeps saying, my good friend, Barack. And you're like, why well, gotta say it like that, Joe? Now, the zoo interchange helps wealthier, mostly white voters with cars, but it does little for poor, mostly black communities who don't have cars, but need access to jobs, which is why civil rights groups were furious. The ACLU has filed suit in federal court over the zoo interchange expansion project. They're asking that a federal judge halt construction until the state comes up with a new plan that also includes public transportation. The ACLU is representing the faith-based community group MICA and the Black Health Coalition of Wisconsin. By the way, a faith-based community group named MICA in Wisconsin is just definitely one dude named MICA. <laughs> Wisconsin ended up settling the lawsuit. Walker was forced to spend $13.5 on three new bus lines and promote bus ridership, which goes against everything he stands for. The Walker family crest is just broken trains and a giant comb that he thinks is a menorah. <laughs> now, I know that it seems like there's nothing anyone can do about this, but that's actually not the case. 
Because right now, there's a fight over public transit in Phoenix, Arizona, where our boys are back at it again. <laughs> The group behind four lanes, no train, has opposed the current plans for light rail expansion into South Phoenix for months now. We are here to kill the light rail. No four lane or two lane anymore. It's just no light rail. Some elected leaders accuse the group behind four lanes, no train, of taking money from the Koch brothers. Okay, that sucks. But you know what's cool? Now I know how my hair would look if I was white. <laughs> look, look when, I, when I first saw this guy, real talk, I was like, dude, this guy's using too much product. But then I realized, <laughs> that's just enough product. <laughs> Back in 2000, Phoenix voted to build a new light rail system. The first section has already been built, and it was a huge success. Way more people use it than anyone expected. And it has spurred $11 billion in local development. But now, there's a plan to extend the system, and it's being opposed by conservative groups that have ties to the Kochs. And they're running ads like this. Phoenix voters have been deceived. The price tag for Phoenix light rail expansion has tripled in three years, costing taxpayers almost a billion dollars. That's $140,000 per passenger. It would be cheaper to buy every rider a brand new Tesla. Prop 105 slams the brakes on wasteful light rail expansion and puts your tax dollars into transportation projects that make sense. Vote yes on 105. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. When I first saw this, I was like, I want a Tesla. <laughs> Screw the train. <laughs> but this is a Coke-supported ad, so it's obviously misleading. Now, screen grab this and do the long division later, but here's the TLDR. The ad overstates costs, ignores the value light rail has created, and most importantly, completely hides what Prop 105 would really do. On August 27th, Phoenix is going to vote on Prop 105, and if it passes, it wouldn't just kill the light rail extension, it would make it impossible for Phoenix to build any light rail in the future. They're trying to make it illegal to build trains. That is some movie villain shit. <laughs> it's like that children's book, The Little Engine That Could, but won't if it knows what's good for it. <laughs> now remember, the Cokes are doing this around the country. Sorry, you gotta look at the real ones this time. <laughs> we can't keep letting them win. We need someone to make a meaningful case for public transportation. So to take on the Koch brothers, I called the Koch brothers. Hey, we're the world's famous Koch brothers. I'm Derek, I'm the older one. And I'm Daniel, I'm still the hotter one. Don't do, do, don't do that again. Don't touch my leg, dude. I won't. If you wanna live the Koch brothers life, you gotta do a few things simple. Number one, support public transit. It's the heart of a healthy economy. People are still trying to fuck with the bus. Like these life alert looking freaks, the Koch brothers. They're fucking with our public transit. And number two, Manscaped guys. No one should be going full bush. There are guys out there whose shit looks like retired lettermen. Like cut your shit up shave and your nuts. fucking shave your nuts. Support public transportation. Shave it's the that nose hair too. Can I speak? The Koch's money is sabotaging transit all over the country. And the government is at my fucking A. The DOT is holding up billions of dollars in funding. There are a few things in this world that fucking piss me off, people. Inept government bureaucracy and bars that don't have ladies night. Killing transit hurts some of the most vulnerable communities across the US. We're talking black people, Indian people, Mexicans, Oriental. Bro, you can't say that word. It's oh, racist. What word? What'd I say? Mexicans. Just call it what it is. Pussy. What's that? It's de facto segregation. Dude, say don't it. call me a pussy, say bitch. It. De facto it's segregation. Dude, your happy? mom's. Your, your mom. mother. Your mom. Fuck you. We have the same mom. Pussy. Remember, living the cook lifestyle isn't hard. Just support public transit. And be a patriot and shave your nuts. Oh. Fuck ass. All right, America. <laughs> You know what you gotta do, get to trimming.